Uh, this is Paul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I just got to the study room. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's 11.51. I just got here about five minutes ago. Yes. Now, uh, this morning I made mention of this dissolution of marriage. Yeah. Uh, we're going to garnish my wages and I won't be able to afford uh, an apartment. Yeah. And uh, Judge Ken Williams on May 24th of 2012 uh, allowed for the petitioner to petition for dissolution of marriage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Confidential report in a sealed envelope and affidavit declaring that I wasn't in the, in the the military, yes, service member civil relief, yes, mm -hmm. and then uh, there was a financial declaration, proposed parenting plan, child support worksheets, yeah, and then um, you arrested me, mm -hmm. and you served me at the same moment, and then there was a sheriff's return of service on May 31st of 2012, right, and then on uh, June 4th of 2012, there was another sheriff's return of service. Yeah. Now, uh, as I, re I remember it, I think it was May 29th that I was arraigned in 2012. Yeah. For the allegation of violating this protection order. Yes. Uh, protection order that was issued in 2011. Mm -hmm. While I was on probation. Yes. For the allegation of domestic violence and child abuse on Guam, yeah. where you did not give me any notice or opportunity to be heard. Yeah. Now, um, you issued a one-year protection order on August 12th of 2012, or 2011. Yeah. Maybe Judge Ken Williams remembers that one-year protection order. Yes. And then maybe Judge Ken Williams remembers this uh, petition for dissolution of marriage. Mm -hmm. Now, um, when you arrested me at the same moment as serving me, I've mentioned that if you commit a crime, the law requires you to inform those in the law enforcement. Yes. Uh, the moment that you suspect that somebody has committed a crime, you can't wait 20 days after. Healthy families of Clallam County. Now, I went to jail, uh, I think it was on the 28th of June of 2012. Yeah. It was Memorial Day weekend. Yes. Now, you can't um, spend 20 days filing for dissolution of marriage when you know that you're going to call the police after you have all the paperwork in place. Right. And then you'll file for a dissolution of marriage and then you'll make up a crime where you'll have the individual arrested three days after you filed for dissolution of marriage. Mm -hmm. See, this whole concept of setting people up, yeah, <laughs> I know those in the family say, well, we're just going to set this up and no one will ever know about it. Yes, yes, yes. But when we really think about it, okay. It's very deceitful to set up anything. Mm. Mm. It's, well, it could be considered criminal. Oh. Now, you filed for dissolution of marriage on oops, May 24th of 2011. Yes. Done. Mm. May 24th, May of 2011. Yes. It was a... Mm -hmm. Tuesday, oh, you had me arrested Sunday night to the 29th, yes, I was arraigned on the 31st, May 2000, oh, I got the wrong year, I'm sorry about that, hang on just a second, it was 2012, the, the days didn't look right, mm -hmm. May 24th was a, a Thursday, yes, 25th, 26th, 27th, you had me arrested and you served me. Yeah. The 28th was a holiday and I was arraigned on the 29th. Yes. And you motioned the court for another protection order on the 31st of Thursday. Yeah. Though usually the family court date is on a Friday. Um, did you allow for a special court hearing for my wife on... May 31st, uh, petition for the renewal of an order for protection. Yeah. 
uh, as if it were an emergency ex parte order. Yes. Because as I remember, Fridays were the day for the petitioning of the court for um, protection orders. Yes. Now, uh, 615 happened to be a Friday. Yes. Mm. Mm. And then uh, that was the reissuance of it. Ooch, ooch, ooch. And then 7 6 of 2012. Yes. Uh, was the actual court date for the issuance of the one year protection order? Oh, that was a Friday. Yes. Um, just having looked over the court rules. Oh, I'm thinking that you made another exception to the rule, didn't you? Yes. See, I uh, was arraigned on the 29th. Yes. Yes, yes. My wife filed for dissolution on the 24th. Right. And the family court commissioner decided to have an, er, uh, an emergency ex parte yes. court hearing one week after she filed for dissolution of marriage on the wrong court date. Poach. As if there was some urgency, okay, to have to renew the protection order. Mm -hmm. Now, it seems that this Friday is the day for family court hearings where you reissue temporary protection orders, yes, or you issue permanent protection orders, yes. Exactly uh, what reasoning was there to have an, a, an exempt to the court rules? Yes. Because when I think about you giving my wife a disillusion of marriage, right, and then on the next Thursday, she petitioned the court to reissue the protection order on the 31st, yeah, instead of the 1st, mm -hmm. um, it looks like the next court hearing would have been 15 days later instead of 14, yes. Now, these court rules where you as a court don't understand exactly what the fuck he's saying, um, we have talked about the issuance of temporary protection orders. Uh, the law only allows for 14 days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, in King County, their rules say, well, two to three weeks. But the truth is, this reissuance of a protection order violates the RCWs of the state of Washington. Yes. And I'm going to sue you for that. <laughs> now... You cannot have emergency reissuance of protection orders. Yes. When this protection order didn't expire until August 12th of 2011. Oh, there was no reason to reissue it. Was there? So really, you had a court hearing in 15 days instead of 14? Yes. See, as I just had shown, uh-huh. Uh, Fridays are the actual day for the family court hearings of the issuance of protection orders. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, July 6th. Right. Mm -hmm. And then uh, let's see here. Okay. The 15th. Yes. Now, I would say, all right, that issuing or reissuing the temporary protection order. Yes. By minute order. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the 15th was actually 15 days from when you issued the protection order. Yes. Happened to be one day more than the 14 days. Yes. But not having the court hearing on the 29th. Yes. Mm -hmm. Was actually 21 days. Oh. <laughs> Happened to be in violation of the actual RCWs of the state of Washington. I'm going to sue you for that one. <laughs> I'm going to sue you for reissuing protection orders where you have no jurisdiction or authority of law. Yes. Then I'm going to sue you for not having them within the requirements of the RCWs of the state of Washington. Pooch. You don't get three fucking weeks to decide you're going to reissue a protection order. Having the court hearing on the 31st of May. Yes. Um, violated court rules of the scheduled days where you petition the court for renewal or reissue of protection orders. Yes. Having the court hearing 15 days after that court date. Yes. Violate the RCWs of the state of Washington. Yes. And then using a minute order to reissue a protection order on 615 of 2012. Yes. Violates the RCWs of the state of Washington. Yes. And then having a court hearing three weeks later violates the RCWs of the state of Washington. 
Now there's one, two, three, four, five, mm -hmm. quite possibly six. Mm -hmm. And then there's the whole issue of the protection order. Yes, did not expire <coughs> until August 12th of 2011. There was absolutely no reason. <laughs>